Alright, in this video we're taking a look at another stack here from HGLRC. It's the Ford 435. This one has the VTX combo. So this one's a full stack. It comes with the flight controller, uh, 401 ESC, and the video transmitter. So let's um, get everything out of the box and we'll take a look at each of the parts. Okay, so here's everything out of the box. Um, we'll take a look at the boards here in a second, but I just want to share everything that comes with it. You get a um, MM, uh, MMCX to SMA adapter. I think you can also choose RPSMA if you want. You do get a MC, uh, MMCX uh, whip antenna, XD30. Get the wiring loom from your flight controller to the foreign ESC. Wiring loom from the uh, VTX to the flight controller. You get your uh, metal screws here and spacers for mounting. So uh, again, no pins on this one like on the older versions of the HGLRC stacks. This one won't have that problem with the pins breaking. You get the this little capacitor here. It's uh, 470 microfarads, 25 volts. So it's a little less than I would like to see because uh, this is a, a 6S capable stack. So 35 volts would be better. And you do get some documentation here. It shows your uh, wiring for your video transmitter. So we'll talk about that in a second. And then you do get uh, a little wiring diagram for the flight controller and the foreign and ESC. So the voltage ranges on these guys are a little bit different. So the flight controller can go 2 to 6S, while the foreign ESC can go 3 to 6S, and the video transmitter does 7 to 26 volts. So um, just keep that in mind. I think obviously 3 to 6S would probably be uh, the best range for all, all three of these components. I don't think you can do 2S on this ESC, so it's not going to work. Okay, so here's a quick look at the foreign one ESC. It's a 35 amp, 32 bit ESC, bursts up to 40 amps for uh, 10 seconds maximum. So 35 amp continuous to, uh, 40 amp um, burst. And as uh, BL32, so it does come with ESC telemetry and a current sensor. So there's a current sensor right there. And then there's an output here for your um, ESC telemetry that goes to the flight controller. Get your nice big soldering pads here for your XD30 or XD60. You get a lot of capacitors here. So on this side, three here, three over here, and also on the other side. So that, that could be perhaps why uh, they've added only a smaller additional capacitor. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the ratings is on all these, but this combined with the external capacitor probably should be okay for 6S. And one thing I'm noticing here is that these pads here are on the side. It's not on the top or the bottom. So could be an issue for some people that have difficulty soldering small wires. These are pretty tiny pads and you'll have to get some pretty good flux and some solder on here to get these wires on here. And the wires can't be too thick it looks like. Okay, so taking a look at the flight controller here. Again, it's a 20 by 20. Uh, the whole thing is a 20 by 20 stack. All these have M2 holes as you can see here on the ESC and also the video transmitter, so if you're wondering what size hole that screw is, it, um, it's an M2 screw. And this, this particular uh, F4 flight controller has five UARTs and um, I believe um, a couple of different uh, ports are dedicated for, I think one's dedicated for ESD telemetry and then uh, they have uh, one allocated uh, if you want to use GPS for example. I'll put a little thing up here on the screen here that shows what was actually in the flight controller itself. The target on here is an Omnibus F4 V6 target. So it does come with an MPU 6000 gyro. You got your Betaflight OSD chip. The voltage regulator on here is a 5 volt, 3 amp voltage regulator. So it should be able to handle receiver, GPS, um, and if, if your video transmitter uh, is a 5 volt video transmitter, it ought to be able to handle that as well. Although the one in the stack here, I think, is going to run off of VBAT. So uh, it's only if you're using the stack without the video transmitter and using like a different video transmitter that runs off of 5 volts. And on the bottom of the board here, don't see any solder pads, just the F4 chip. And you got your black box chip here as well. And then you got your uh, connector for your uh, wiring loom to your foreign ESC. And then all the connections are going to be on the top. The board should be oriented this way with the a USB port out the left, and this should be the top. There's a small arrow right there pointing forward. That's probably where the for, um, you should have the board oriented this way so that the forward of the craft is this way. Nice big solder pads here for all of your connections, even though it's a tiny board. I think over here in the front you're going to have your 
camera connections. You have uh, UART3 over here, TX3, RX3. Uh, I think on the, the wiring diagram here, they're showing that for the uh, GPS. And then you have connections for SDA, SCL down here for your compass. And then your connections for your VTX are going to be over here. And I think this is where you're going to connect up uh, VBAT for the VTX. You have a 5 volt and ground over here for your GPS or receiver. And then your receiver actually go down here. Uh, you have RC here, that's um, inverted SBUS, this is an F4 chip. And then RX1 over here is for your uninverted SBUS, um, or uninverted. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be for things like IBUS, um, DSMX, Spectrum, Crossfire. And then over here is going to be for your inverted SBUS for FreeSky receivers. You have a TX1 here for your S4 telemetry, LED, 5 volts and ground here, and then you have a um, RSSI pad over here. Alright, so here's a look at the video transmitter. You do have a microphone here, and there's that so you can pick up audio. You have your connection here for your connector for the wiring loom, it goes to the flight controller. Uh, button here for changing your bands channel power. I believe this is using the tramp protocol, I'm not 100% sure on that, uh, but it is video. Um, so, um, VTX uh, remote control capable, so you can, can change all your channels via the flight controller. And you do have some pads here on the bottom if you prefer to do some soldering, so it shows the uh, pads in the order of the wiring, but it's very, very tiny. Uh, but I think that is also the order of the uh, pins here as well. Um, this video transmitter goes up to 350 milliwatts, so um, it's uh, pretty decent for the size. I think, and, and for <laughs> for most micros, I think 350 milliwatts is going to be plenty. So the uh, last spec I want to mention is the, the total weight that they're um, showing in the product page is 18.4 grams for the whole stack. I know some people are going to ask about that. And the height is gonna, in terms of the height of the stack, it's going to depend on how you use the spacers here. Some of these spacers are kind of big, I think. You could make it taller or shorter, and maybe use uh, shorter screws, so the height's going to kind of vary. Um, but I'm thinking minimum height on this is, it's not going to be, I mean, assuming you pack it down super tight, you're going to need a little bit of space there between the flight controller and the EC just for heat dissipation, but, you know, we're talking, it's going to be tough to get below 20 millimeters, but possible if you're, if you use the right spacers. And the fact that you don't have pins or anything that like that, you could get things closer, but again, you're going to want some good heat dissipation for that ESC, if you're, especially if you're um, drawing a lot of current. Anyway, so this stack is pretty versatile. I think you could use this in a lot of different types of things. Um, everything from a 3-inch uh, all the way up to maybe an ultralight 5-inch. 35 amps is a little probably on the low side for 5-inch, but if it's a really light one and using like 2204 or 2205 motors, uh, you could probably put this on an ultralight 5-inch as long as you keep the weight down and don't exceed the amp capacity of these 400 ECs. Uh, of course, the flight controller, video transmitter, pretty basic. Um, we've seen plenty of these before, and they should perform pretty well. And I like the fact that it has five UARTs on this particular board, even though it's only an F4. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.